What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. Gold Pony here. Behind me is the new 2024 Celine Black Label Mustang. And Mr. Celine is actually here to tell you about it. Let's take a look. And first of all, let's welcome Steve Celine to the show. How you doing, sir? Good, good. Great to be here. I can't believe it's 50 years for Carlisle. Great. Obviously, again, as I said, it's great to be here. We are uh, very excited with the 2024 Mustang that by far Ford has built a great vehicle and uh, we've, we've taken it into a little different area here and I'll take a little bit of time to take about our top of the line black label. But we do offer, before I get into the black label, we have a white label, which is a normally aspirated 510 horsepower, unbelievable really in performance with aerodynamic suspension uh, and uh, Obviously the tires and wheels have changed to go with the, the suspension and exhaust system but we also and I urge everyone to come and look at the interior of all of our 2024 Mustangs. It's a dramatic differently uh, experience than what you have seen in the past and so I encourage everyone to come down go through our display on that. But They've asked me here to talk about our black label, which is the top of our line. The white, yellow, and black labels actually come from our racing heritage. When I started racing over 50 years ago, I really used white, yellow, and black as a racing color. So through the years, in the 80s, you would have seen our Mustangs with white, yellow, and black. In the 90s, when we were had the horse graphic and Tim Allen involved, it was white, yellow, and black with with the purple, and then as we got into the uh, 2000s, again, with Mustangs and with our S7, it was white, yellow, and black. So we've continued on that tradition on offering the different labels. So a lot of people have asked me about how we've come to the nomenclature, as that gives you a little bit of background. In particular here, though, the car that we're displaying here is our brand new 2024, Black Label 302. And as in every vehicle we do, we, we touch what I call all of the food groups. We do the suspension, aerodynamics, uh, interior, and the drivetrain. And every, depending whether it's the white, yellow, or black, all get, get those treatments done. And that's been the same case basically from the 80s. So the new one is no different, except that we've taken it a little bit in a different uh, direction. Is first of all, this has our latest racecraft suspension design. It's our own shocks, our own springs, sway bars, bushings, all of the stiffening bars that go into actually giving you a very good track ability, but also very compliant so that you can drive it every day in the normal fashion back and forth to the mall or to the for the uh, uh, shopping center or just cruising around through the uh, hamburger stand. We then, <clears throat> we've taken though with our own design wheels. We have two different design wheels. This, the black label and our heritage of treatment get a little bit different wheel treatment as the white and yellow get a different wheel treatment. The black label here has obviously a five spoke which has become traditional with us over the years on this. But what we do is that the offset of the wheels gives us the widest footprint that you can get. So it gives us a much better handling that we are able to achieve on both the street and the track. Then it's wrapped here in with the high performance continental tires that we upgrade to give you the best traction that you can actually get. So all of the suspension, again, the people talk about it, you really have to drive it, you have to experience it. But with the independent rear suspension and the way that we've designed it over the years, this actually gives you the ultimate in performance. The next thing though that I would point out really is again what everyone looks at is the aerodynamics and the styling of the vehicle. This particular new vehicle is really no different. We take an engineering approach to everything that we do on the car. We will look at the target performance and then we will come back 
and look at how we achieve that through the styling and the aerodynamic treatment. And what, what we are always arguing about, we're, we're always trying to break the law, and that's the law of physics. And in doing that, we're always arguing with the engineers, the race car drivers, ourselves, is to what is called L over D, lift over drag. And this vehicle here may look subtle, but what people don't realize is when you're really looking at top speed on it, all of the subtle changes that we have done. At first, we will look at how do we reduce the drag going down the straight. And what we've done this year is we've reshaped the complete front of the car. As you can see from a standard Mustang, we have brought it down much more into a center point that gives us a little bit less drag. The other thing that we have done, we've extended the hood. And when you look at it, the hood is actually seamless and goes all the way to the front. We, there is no bar here or a break between the front fascia and the hood. We've taken the advantage of making this actually a integrated smooth surface on this. So what that happens is as the air uh, impacts the front of the vehicle, you want to be able to channel it. And that's where the side vents that you can see how we've done gives us as if they were canards on this. We've incorporated that on the side through the side um, strakes here with the canards. We've reduced the amount of top frontal area into the radiator, taking advantage of the bottom air. And then because of our hood, we're able to actually extract a larger volume of hood out here um, up over the hood uh, and into the roof of the car. We also have very functional side vents, uh, which again, if you look at between the center line of the wheels, now becomes a lot more integrated into giving us less drag and more downforce. That enables us then, as you can see, is we're able to build in a big splitter, which then gives us the ultimate to where we've reduced the amount of drag, so top speed is much higher, but at the same time, um, we're able to get the advantage of actually adding a lot more downforce. And by doing that, that puts the pressure on the front tires and the suspension. So your grip going into a corner, your point in, when you get to the apex and your exit, here you have the ultimate that you can actually get on the performance side of the vehicle on the front end amount of stick. And that's where a lot of the subtleties. The next thing though, as the air goes up over the roof, which we've left alone on this particular, but the side of the vehicle becomes very important. And we take, if you look at the side through the CFD and our wind tunnel testing, you will see that these side skirts are really totally different. They're very integrated into the whole vehicle, but at the same time, we're able to channel the air around and through the side of the car. And unlike uh, some of the others that you've seen on this, if you look at, at the back of it, there is a slight protrusion out in the back. The reason for that is that we take a lot of time to put where the center or the pivot point of the vehicle is. And from a driver's standpoint, having that in the right near the back of your seat gives you the best feel when you're really trying to go fast. And that's where part of the aerodynamic development gets into it. Some you see up in the front, more like front wings. We, we take a little different attitude and a little different uh, posture in the way that we design the air channeling and the feeling that you want to have in driving the car. Then as we come to the back, we have taken the whole liberty here of changing the complete rear. First of all, we've extended the back of the rear fascia. We also have a full under, uh, underside uh, diffuser that's very functional that works with the full under tray from the front all the way through the back. And this is where today's modern cars have gotten a lot more sophisticated 
even as they come from the factory, and the underneath of the car becomes so much more important in the downforce and the less drag that you're able to get. Of course, we've taken the liberty here to balance now, which is why we have a big Celine rear wing on it. This is required to balance and give the amount, the equal amount of downforce in the rear to match the downforce that we're able to achieve in the front. We've also, from a styling standpoint, you will see, we've taken the liberty and we've re gone back to, um, in, if you will, in the 90s, where we now are introducing back to the Celine Center exhaust, which really makes it a very dramatic and a very uh, cool statement. The other thing that you can't see during the day, but at night, the back of this car looks unbelievable because integrated in the rear diffuser is we have special rear lights that are on when the headlights come on and your taillights are on. Going down the highway, you will not be able to, to miss in the distinctive rear end of the car at night, no matter if you're on a, uh, a totally black, um, with no uh, side lights on it. We've taken, again, we've incorporated how we incorporate our tail lights. The reason for that, it gives a little bit of a wider stance and that's been part of a traditional Celine uh, insignia here for quite a few years. The, um, so overall, we've, we've ended up having a, a very, uh, very integrated, it's a little bit more sophisticated, and you really can't tell where Ford stopped and we begin, and that's one of the things that we always take a lot of pride on. We've also made it into a traditional Mustang that I would point out that we add the B-pillar uh, post, so you actually have a quarter window that goes all the way back to 1964-65 uh, tradition. The next aspect of, that we do with the vehicle is we go in and look at the interior. The interior, again, this is the, probably a, a little bit more than in the past. We have a major change that we have done with the seating. We have an Alcatara steering wheel, which I will tell you that once you get used to that, you will not want to go back to a plain leather one. And our seats have the right propulsor. We have brought all of our assembly of the seats now are done in-house, all the upholstery. This has the Alcantara, and we kind of joke about the fact that we can put Velcro on the back of you and then you'll sit in the seat, you will never move again. You'll need a lot of help to even get out of it, but uh, talk about grip. But the biggest change that we have done, we've taken advantage. Ford has up the game on having, if you will, the latest in electronics and basically the iPad type of both the dash and the information and implementation uh, system. We have taken the liberty where we have wrapped that hole into a, a concentrated uh, cockpit, so to speak, so it gives you a lot more of a sports car, race car type of a cockpit. And then we've also taken and integrated into the grab handle, which you will need for your passenger, not suggesting that you scare people, but at the same time, it, it makes a very nice and it's integrated into the whole system. And again, I will, this is something that is on all of our cars, whether it's white label, yellow label, or the black label, and I do urge everyone to come in, sit in the standard vehicle, and then sit in ours, and you tell me how, how it makes you feel. And the driving experience really is totally different. And then, of course, it wouldn't be a Celine if we didn't address the drivetrain. And the drivetrain, again, is no different. Everybody has, has takes that their own part. This, we supercharge the car, and the black label starts a little over 800 horsepower. In today's market, you had, as I mentioned last night at the banquet, is that everyone has lived in the golden age of the 60s on this is nothing to compare to today's age because today you have a variety of different Mustangs, both from the factory 
and from other people that you can have 800 horsepower and still have something that will idle and, and uh, drive to the market. The one thing that I have fun in driving to work every day is I can actually get 99 miles to the gallon on this 800 horsepower because on my way up there's a hill I have to climb and I can take it out of gear, out of six gear and coast down the hill and I can watch the uh, mileage accumulation and the uh, my average fuel account uh, count actually go up to 99. That's as high as it will go. And uh, But it always makes me feel good that I'm driving an 800 horsepower vehicle and able at times to get 99 miles to the gallon. And that just depends on your right foot. But uh, we've had a lot of fun in, in, uh, in, in doing this. I would be remiss though is that this car has a special Celine color. We actually do 14 different colors. This, this one here is what we call beryllium. And the reason that bri uh, beryllium is a copper color, I and again invite at night or during the day the flop on it from uh, golden to uh, more copper to uh, orange on this, I think is at times uh, can be very breathtaking. Uh, to look at how the paint application has been done. The, um, we also have, the name beryllium is actually part of, um, it's a, uh, one of the, on the periodic table, it's one of the elements that you can get um, uh, out of the earth. And the reason why it's an important element in the automotive community is that is that we actually use it on the exit uh, valves, uh, the seats and the heads on the exit side of the engine because it dissipates heat much better. So that means I can run a hotter, a more aggressive spark in um, fuel on this and exit it by utilizing the beryllium inserts uh, for that. And beryllium, when you mine it, is a little bit of the copper uh, before it, it, it gets uh, exposed to the air. And uh, so that's, that's the reason for uh, some of the history in, the, in the, uh, the, the, if you will, the physics and the math and the information on how we actually go about developing the car. This particular car, the black labels, again, this is where I talk about our white labels, price-wise start at $60,000, complete for the car with 510 horsepower. I will say from a value standpoint, you cannot even beat this. Then you get into the yellow labels and then we're into the high 70s and, and low 80s for 745 horsepower. Our black labels are a little over 100,000. And again, 100,000 is a lot for a car, but when you realize how much horsepower it makes the Ferrari and some of the other models just becomes very much of a bargain. And over the years, over the 40 plus years with Celine Mustangs now, they actually are the least expensive cars you can buy today. And that is because of the ownership is that if you look at the purchase price plus the maintenance and the, and the uh, insurance over the period of time, and then the resale value, you realize that it's actually, our vehicles are cheaper than a Honda Civic or a Toyota Corolla or Camry, and you can still have 800 horsepower at your disposal in a very unique car. So uh, in today's market, it is actually a very smart, smart buy. As a lot of people have talked to me uh, over the weekend, it has been really, pretty cool on the journey that we have, again, in celebrating the 50 years here with Carlisle, celebrating the 60 years with Ford and the Mustang, and our 40 plus years with Celine in bringing the uh, vehicles to, to you today. I had the pleasure a few, actually last week, on this, and this is something that, that I think only happens again once is that my, my mom turned 100 years last Wednesday. And in doing that, 
Thank you. And so to celebrate that, we had her driving an 800 horsepower Celine Mustang, just to show how easy and how much fun it is. And what a great age that we live in. And so that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you are any new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay going.